Hey, and welcome to the airwaves. Hey, thanks for joining me. My name's Andy, K5PO. Okay, so you passed your technician's license. You have an amateur radio license. First, let me say congratulations. Honestly, it's awesome. It's been an absolutely lovely hobby for me. I was first licensed in 2008, and it's been an absolute blast. I know you're gonna have a ton of fun in the hobby. But, uh, yeah, so you have a technician amateur radio license. Now what? Okay. Well, first things first, uh, I would say you obtained through your work in preparing for the test, you've obtained the ability to operate on the air, legally operate on the air. That's a big point of the license. Uh, to me, I think the license is really kind of two things. One, it's a journey of education. You are seeking the license and in doing so, you have to commit to studying and understanding the rules and the technical elements of amateur radio in the United States or whatever nation or DXCC entity you may be in. Uh, so you're committing that time to learning something so you can use it. So there's the educational journey, and that part is a lot of fun and very rewarding. There's also the legal journey, the legal element of the license. And that is basically just saying, this license permits me to legally operate on the frequencies that that particular license grants. Uh, in the case of the technician license in the United States, we'll take a look at that in a second and what that all means. But you get to operate. So I'd say the first thing I would think about doing when, I got a when, you, when you get your technician license is put it to work. Get to operating as soon as you can, in whatever way you can, that is within the permissions of that license. Uh, you know, you don't want to waste, have wasted your time in obtaining this license, so put it to work. Uh, let's take a look at how and where you can do that. Okay, so this is the U.S. Amateur Radio Bands printout. And you'll see this particular page on the desks of uh, most amateur radio operators. Even I have one printed down in my drawer over here that I have to pull out to refresh myself from time to time. So certainly no shame in that. No shame in having that reference ready for you and printing that out. Actually, I would encourage you to do so. Let's take a look at what we see for your technician license. So a couple of quick callouts you see over here. They, they had the T for technician, and that's denoting those ranges of frequency or, or frequency bands that you get to operate in as a technician. You'll notice some called novice and some called extra as well. Those are license classes that you can actually no longer acquire. Some people may have novice or, at, or advanced licenses still. They certainly do. Uh, I'm actually not sure if they have novices anymore. I, I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, uh, there are some people that have uh, advanced licenses still, I believe. Uh, certainly I've seen one recently, or a couple years ago maybe. It's been a while. Uh, but these days you have technician, general, and, and extra. But this document still shows you those things that are permissible for each of those license classes. So again, you're the technician. Let's take a quick walk around. There's all these amateur radio bands you can see here. Uh, and they start at our highest bands in terms of the highest frequencies, super high frequency bands, uh, 2300 megahertz, all the way up to above 275 gigahertz. These are way up there. These are super high frequency bands. And you actually have access to all of those bands. So that's pretty sweet. But frankly, those bands don't get used too terribly often. Maybe you wanted to experiment in them and that's why you got your license. Awesome, <laughs> go for it. You have permission to do so. Where most people tend to go, are something more up in here and up in here. So the most common bands technicians are going to be operating on when you get a license are 
70 centimeters or 420 megahertz or 440 megahertz bands because we oftentimes denote the bands by either their frequency of operation or the physical size of the band's wavelength. Sometimes they're used kind of interchangeably or they often are. That can get a bit confusing. You'll see both of those noted on this chart. So 70, uh, 70 centimeters or 420 megahertz band and two meters or 144 megahertz band. So that's 70 centimeters or two meters bands. Those are going to be your two big bands you're going to find yourself probably operating on most of the time as a technician. And here's the cool part. You have access to all of those bands, the entirety of those bands, and really at whatever power is permissible, up to 1500 watts peak envelope power or PEP. You also see some less common bands, 1.25 megahertz or 222 megahertz bands, 30, uh, 33 centimeter band, 23 centimeter band. These bands have some usage, uh, but less so, certainly less so than 70 centimeters or the two meter band. Um, you'll also see a couple of things that you have access to outside of, that, of, those, of those higher frequency, uh, very high frequency or super high frequency bands. Let's take a look at those. So on the left here, you see that some of those, some of the bands that we just talked about a second ago. And again, you see for most of these, you have massive amounts of access. The T over here, it, the T over here indicating that you have access to all of that band at full power. Same and same. Same here and same here. So that's very cool. You'll notice this little segment in white and these in red and green. We'll flip back to that and what that means here a bit more in a second. Let's take a look up at this one here for a second. This one's a bit special, especially for technicians. This is the 10 meter band or 28 megahertz band. And the 10 meter band is a, is a band in the HF frequency of spectrums, uh, the HF frequency spectrum. The HF frequency spectrum is more commonly what you think about for general and extra licenses, but you have some access here in 10 megahertz as well, and access for phone or voice, which is a bit rare for the technician class. You see up in this little yellow section from 28.300 megahertz to 28.500 megahertz, you have access to 200 watts as a technician of phone or voice. Now, most commonly in that segment of what you're going to be talking about is single sideband voice. Now, single sideband voice is the mode that most radios that are designed for HF amateur radio operations will have as your primary voice mode. You also have amplitude modulation and frequency modulation in HF, but they're very minimally used and they're generally not used in this segment of the phone band for 10 megahertz. They're used kind of higher in the band for 10 megahertz. AM is used all over the place in the voice bands for HF. FM is very, very rarely used in HF, almost exclusively in 10 meters. But again, that's higher up in the band. And as a technician, you won't have access to that part of the band just quite yet. But I call that out because that's an awesome little segment to get access to. And if you have, for, by chance, an HF radio that has single sideband, that has 10 meters, and you have a 10 meter antenna, well, you are ready for that segment of the band. And if you're watching anywhere around now, which is the beginning of 2025, HF is doing pretty good. We're toward the peak of this solar cycle, which means that you're gonna have propagation that's gonna allow the 10 meter band to oftentimes open up or become useful with its propagation patterns through wide swaths of the world, especially during the daytime. That particular segment of band you have access to there becomes very powerful for single sideband 10 meter communications from 28.3 megahertz to 28.5 megahertz. Wanted to call that out because it's a super awesome little segment of the band, especially for technicians. But, uh, you know, what do we not have access to as a technician? Oh, 
Okay. Uh, unfortunately, what we don't have access to is a lot more. So we have, you see here, the green segments here are noted as the phone and image, and the red segments are RIDI and data. So you're generally going to see CW, RIDI, PSK, uh, Livia, uh, FT8, FT4 throughout much of these red segments, and then you're going to have, for the most part, in the green segments, single sideband phone, um, AM phone, in those green segments. And sometimes there's also something, uh, the, the band plan goes deeper and tells you, hey, this is a segment that's recommended. Here's a part of the band recommended for a specific mode. FT8 and FT4, for example, kind of have their own predefined sort of band plans because the WSG um, WSJTX um, uh, uh, program has predefined frequencies, and people tend to stick to those. But you don't just have to operate FT8 or FT4 and those sort of things on those frequencies, but it tends to work best if you're trying to connect with most hams that are using it. But for the rest of the segment of the bands, they're pretty flexible. The Red segments allow CW, and that's what you're going to see through a lot, through almost, almost all of these segments. You'll do note this little squiggly white section here. And what that basically means is CW only is allowed in that segment of the band. Important call out, because as you see for your technician class, in 40 meters, which is a big, super awesome band that is very flexible in HF, you have access to a segment of 40 meters as a technician and limited to 200 watts, but you have to be using CW. CW, or continuous wave, you, wave, uses Morse code. You're a technician. I'm sure you already know that. But you may not know CW yet. If you don't, hey, maybe that's something you want to learn. Awesome. You have access to those segments of the band as a technician because you are a, 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 a license there. You don't have that on most HF bands. You don't have any access to 160 meters, any access to 630 meters or 220, uh, to, uh, 2200 meters. However, those super, super low bands aren't as popular either. You don't have any access to 30 meters or 20 meters, 20 meters being an absolute peach of a band because um, it's open much of the day into the early evening, sometimes even overnight, and has tremendous propagation. As you see, no technician access there, or 70 meters, which acts quite similarly to 20 meters. You do have a CW segment on 15 meters. You do have a CW segment on 80 meters, and again, 40 meters as well. But that eight, 10 meter band over here in that little segment, again, that's the little sweet spot, the cherry on top for the technician because you have access to that for phone, for single sideband. So what do you do as a technician? What is next? My recommendation is very simple here. Keep studying, keep going, get your general. And you may say, Andy, I just got the technician license. That was already a daunting task. I get it. You probably, submit, uh, you probably committed a quite a bit of time to that test and to taking that license and to getting the technician license that you just acquired. That's really awesome. I mean that. And put it to use. I mean that too. Start today if you can. If you have the radio, you have the antenna, get on a repeater, Get in a simplex uh, a QSO, maybe try out that segment on 10 meters you have access to for single sideband. Whatever you got, use it now and start having fun. But keep going and keep studying. I say this because as a technician who just took this test, or maybe you took it pretty recently, but it's going to be fresh in your head. You had those books. You went deep into them. Maybe use the tool like some sort of ham test, uh, drilling tool, uh, or hey, you're watching the ham radio crash course videos, whatever it may be, you're putting a lot of time into that. And you have it all up in your head. It's all bouncing around. The theory, the rules, the details about different antenna constructions and how propagation works, it's all up there. So before those sort of things fade, and some of them are going to fade, Keep going. Start studying for your general license today. 
the general license and what you get access to in these frequencies, because with the general license, as you can see where it says G, you get access to massive swaths of every band. Every band is gonna have huge chunks that you can use for data and for voice. And that's gonna really open up even greater uh, options for you to communicate in amateur radio throughout the world. I personally am an HF guy. That's where I spend most of my time when I'm trying to play radio, when I'm having fun on the airwaves. Now, my call sign, as you can probably see below, or I mentioned before, is K5PO. That specific call sign actually does indicate that I'm an amateur extra. So I kept going for the last license as well. And hey, if you're on that path, absolutely do it. That's awesome. That's even more frequencies you get access to. But if you're a technician, keep going, get that general. I want to work you on HF. So many other people do too. And the fact that HF is simply alive almost any time of day or night, there's almost always something to do, almost always someone to talk to, to have a CUSA with, especially when you get access to the broader ranges of HF frequencies. It makes it even more fun. So pick up that general book today. Check out a general study guide free online. There's a lot of them. Start drilling on the general test questions and set yourself a date when you're going to go back, take that next test and become a general. You can do it. Many have. I know you can too. And again, we'd love to have you on the airwaves. We want to catch you on those HF bands in the general segment of the band so we can have a nice chat. Hey, thanks for joining me on the airwave, on the airwaves. Continue your journey in ham radio, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care, 73.